So you are a sex coach, I guess you have sex with your clients. My name is Martha, I'm a relationship counsellor and clinical sexologist. I've always been interested in sex. It was just one of those things that I was curious about as a child. So when I became sexually active, I didn't want to be bad in sex. <laughs> so I started to try to find out more about sexuality and more about sex because when uh, I got into like girl talk with my friends, I realised that uh, a lot of them were very um, inhibited in their sexual attitude and they were very uncomfortable about sex. They didn't enjoy sex, they had painful sex, they didn't feel like having sex. So I realised that I was very different from them in the sense that I was pretty much, much more positive. And that's how it started where I asked myself, is there such a thing as a sexual counsellor, somebody who's a counsellor but specialised in sexuality? When I went to sex school in San Francisco to get my doctorate in human sexuality, I was the only um, Asian there. I was thinking only of sex in the context of heterosexual relationships. I was also not exposed to other things like sex and disability, uh, sex and aging, uh, sex and cancer. One of the first things that uh, shocked me was how I was just put into the same umbrella as uh, sex workers because that was people's only exposure to sexuality. So you're a sex coach, I guess you have sex with your clients. So that's what people projected onto me. I felt hurt and disappointed and angry and confused and lost. The first two years of my practice, I kind of um, hide uh, by saying, okay, I am the professional, I have the doctorate, you have a problem, I'm here to help you they try to push your boundaries like so does it mean we have sex? Oh, we don't have sex. If I bring my girlfriend, do we have sex in front of you? As a counsellor, as a coach, we don't actually have sex with our clients. It is rare, I guess, to meet somebody who is willing to make a stand for sex and saying, look, uh, sex is not something that is scary. When you learn and you get more information and knowledge, sex is also about pleasure. It's also a way back to yourself and back to uh, love and intimacy. And if you open the papers, it's always in a negative way. Rape, assault, like these stories actually do start to affect women. Like, oh, okay, that could have been me. I have worked with more than 600 couples who cannot consummate their marriage and or have vaginismus. So vaginismus is a condition that happens when a woman's vagina shuts down in anticipation of penetration and it's very, very traumatic because imagine you have saved your virginity till your wedding, on your wedding night, find out that you cannot have sex. And then you start worrying that your husband is going to cheat on you, get angry with you, divorce you. When you've been married for two years and you still haven't had a child, people assume that the woman is not willing. So then they'll ask, hey, how come no baby? How come? Why? What's happening? Uh, don't be so stubborn. Don't be fo too focused on your career. How do you tell someone, I couldn't even consume my marriage? And why is this always the woman's fault? So that's the biggest, biggest group that I work with. And then I also work with people with low sex drive because they are having pain or they are tired because of work. I also work with men with uh, early ejaculation, premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation. They want to but cannot ejaculate. And people with erectile difficulties. So even though there is medication that can help with erection, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, Sometimes they cannot take this medication if they have high blood pressure, diabetes. I do believe in scheduling sex because we are busy. We do schedule what is important for us. How is it that we are completely okay with scheduling our wedding day or scheduling a movie date, but suddenly when it comes to scheduling sex, no, cannot, it's supposed to be spontaneous, it has to be spontaneous, otherwise it's not good. But was their wedding day good? Was the movie date good? So I think it's very much what we tell ourselves. Besides using words and gestures and hands, there are of course articles and videos and visual aids. I will have vowel cushion. So this is one of them, so I will explain all the different parts of the anatomy. It's, it's bigger than life, but it's a, it's a good teaching tool. And then I have a smaller one as well. They may be asking what types of sex toys to start with, so I might recommend them a sex toy. And this is one lubricant that I do share with my clients who I may have premature ejaculation, I would recommend that they use silicon lubricant for instance. There's also masturbation devices uh, such as this one called Tenga Egg. 
so it can be used for learning how to change the way they masturbate. So they come in different designs and different ridges. They do come with a water-based lubricant. Okay, so there's also the dilator kit for people with vaginismus. They usually come in four cylindrical cone sizes, plastic, but they also have the better ones on the market, which are also vibrators. Basically, through more education, you can see a light bulb goes on inside them, and you can see their face change from sadness and depression to like hope and happiness and even joy. And that's what I live for. Actually, that's why I keep doing what I do. Because I, I am shocked and I'm amazed by the transformation that is possible inside them in one session. My name is Martha. I'm a relationship counsellor and clinical sexologist. This is why I do what I do.